Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kent's Vintage Farmhouse in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I have to say, I am honored that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. You know, in my last video, I told you guys that this one's gonna be very special. We've been working our way through the IOD Summer Collection. We've done stamps, inlays, and molds. But in this one, we're gonna do transfers. One in particular, you know what it is. It's the seed catalog because all of you guys have been asking me to do some projects based off of the seed catalog. Well, all of my projects are gonna be based off the seed catalog and I hope you like it. Well, that's enough of my blabbing, right, Miss Roxy? Let's jump on into the farmhouse and see what I've been cooking up for you this week. All right, for DIY number one, we can't get started unless I show you the actual seed catalog. This is it. You know, all of their artwork is always beautiful and every transfer is perfect. Now there's a bunch of transfers in this one. It's actually got eight by 12 sheets and there's eight of them in there full of different sized transfers. Look at this first beautiful one here. I think this is so pretty. And then we've got some that's got fruit on it, different fruit. There's strawberries, blackberries, cherries, mixed in with florals and birds. And I love the apple one. And one of my favorites is Little May. It says May's seed catalog, but when I look at that little girl, in my mind, her name is May. And so I just think that she is a little doll and then there's some more um, apples and some more flowers. This is probably my favorite one out of all of them. And then this one is a new one on the right here that I think is gorgeous. And then there is just a, like a black and white colored one. And then one here that's got roses on it that's black and white. More strawberries, some peas. And then this beautiful one in the back. And that's all eight pages of the seed catalog. Now let's get to work on our project. I got this sign at the thrift store. I only paid probably three or four dollars for it. I can't remember. I have had this thing forever. And you see on the back of it, it's got a saying on it. But that's not going to bother us. We're not going to even use that side. We're going to use this back side because I love that it has this border around it. And so it looks like it's framed already. That's perfect. And I like that old rough lumber look of it. I measured it out just for reference. It's 30 long by 12 high. And my plan for this is to do a crackle. It's been a really long time since I've done crackle. And I thought, why not give it a whirl? I'm going to use the Dixie Bell crackle. I've never used it before. And I'm first going to put down DIY paint, dark and decrepit. Now, dark and decrepit is a top coat, and it's a patina, and it did say if you want your wood to be like the color that it is under there, then use like a top coat. Well, I decided to use a color top coat. Why not? Because the first color that you put down in a crackle is going to be the color that your cracks are, if that makes sense, like the cracks. I want mine to be dark and decrepit, so that's why I'm using dark and decrepit. Now, you see I'm not trying to be especially careful or anything on here. I pretty much just slapped it on there, and I painted the whole thing, the front and the back, and all the sides of this. After your first coat is dry, then you're going to grab your crackle. Now, like I said, I've never used this before, and I was so pleased at the way it turned out. I'm not a huge fan of the Dixie Bell products because I'm a DIY girl through and through, but there are a couple of products from Dixie Bell, like this one and the Slick Stick, that I stand by and say are good products. I didn't do anything special. I pretty much slapped it on. I did not do it thick. I didn't do it thin. I just kind of did, you know, just a normal application of this. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect, and I was just hoping and praying for the best, you know. 
I did notice that this stuff is really thick and you don't have to go and buy a special crackle. You don't have to do that. You can actually do this same thing with Mod Podge or with like just regular old school glue. Now, I got this crackle. Somebody gave it to me. I think a subscriber sent it to me, so I'm going to use it. I went around the edges, but I didn't do the back part. Now, it did take quite a while for that to dry, but when it finally dried, I grabbed my color beadboard. This is going to be my top color, and it says, do not go back and forth. You make one swipe of paint. Well, this is a rough board, so it was kind of hard to do one swipe of paint. So, by the time I was finished, I figured out it was best to do it in smaller strokes. It didn't say that you had to do it in one long stroke. It just said that it just needed to go one direction and don't backstroke. Just go zoop and you're done, you know? So I did that all the way on the front of my board here and then around what I'm going to call the frame. And then I just set it aside and patiently let it dry. And it almost started crackling immediately. I was really, really surprised. When that white coat dried, this is what it looked like, and I love it. It's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to look like an old board that you found in Granny's barn from a million years ago that's just been sitting there, and time has just done its thing on it. You know, I have picked out four different transfers that I want to use on this piece, but I don't know how I'm going to set them out just yet. I do want to, of course, use the bigger ones because this is a bigger sized project. I know that I want the one that says seeds on it, and I've got to use my very favorite one, which is the one that has that pink dahlia on it. I love it. But I want to challenge y'all with something. You know, when we look at these transfers, we think to use them as a whole. I want to challenge you to use it in a different way. Just cut off the words. Now, of course, I cannot cut off that word that says seeds there because it's attached to the flower, basically, and it wouldn't look right if I cut it off. But most of the words there, I could cut off, and even if they are very close to the flowers like this one was, you'll see there in the white part of the flower and in the pink part of the flower, I had to kind of fussy cut around it. I had to be really careful because I didn't want to use or lose my beautiful dahlias. And what I do to make it look right is I cut it out. Like I said, I fussy cut it, which means you go in and out of all the little grooves, you know. And if it looks kind of funny or doesn't look like the petal like it did before, I just kind of cut it to shape it that way. Now, it's just a trick of the eye, but it works like a charm, honey. And I cut off all of the words to all of these pictures, except for that word seeds, because like I said, you know, it was kind of attached. Now, don't you think for a minute that I'm going to waste all those beautiful words. I'm definitely going to use them. I just set them to the side for when I am going to need them, and I can use them in different projects. You don't even have to use them in the same picture they came off of. But for right now, I want to focus on my flowers and get in my mind the image that I want this to be. Now, I know that I wanted the flower basically in the middle that's going to say seeds, but I just had to kind of spread out things to where it looks like it's one big, huge piece, like one big transfer. And that's all I'm doing here is just kind of feeling my way around the transfer. Now, I know just by looking at this that the dahlias are kind of going to be in the background not to where they're not seen but they're almost going to be a background piece so that is going to be the very first thing that i put down anything that you feel that is going to be a background piece just put it down first and then the stuff that you definitely want to stand out put it on last and the reason why I say that is because when you look at it, it's going to look like one cohesive piece, not like four different transfers. But that's just my little hack on how to put it together to figure out, you know, how do I make this look right to the eye? 
And then always after you do your transfers, you burnish them. And that just means you use that little plastic sheet that it came off of and basically just rub it around on the top of it. And it just helps to get a better adhesion. And this is another little trick that I love to do is I cut my transfers down as low as I can like I am here on the word seeds because I want to know how much room I'm going to have on the side. The backing on this is white. So if I just laid it down, I couldn't see the other pattern beside it to know exactly where to put that flower that I'm putting down now. But since I cut the word seeds down on the sides, I could actually tell exactly where I needed to put this one at. What you do is they give you a little tool in every single one of the transfers that come out, and it's this little plastic piece I'm using, and you just kind of rub it back and forth over your image, and I like to hold up the edge of my little plastic piece because I feel like it makes it go on easier. Now I'm putting on the one with the word seeds, and you'll see what I'm talking about. See, it's going to fit right here, right in between those other two, and you can still see them perfectly, but the difference is since I cut those down, you can get it close enough to where they're not overlapped or covering up one, you know? And you can see here how I like to use that, um, take the edge up and pull it, and that just helps me to get a better... I don't know, it just goes on easier for some reason. And once you do one or two of these transfers, they're just a piece of cake after that. I mean, they're a piece of cake anyways, but it just takes one or two times so you really feel confident in what you're doing. Now you can see what I'm talking about, how the Dahlia and then that one on the right are kind of like in the background and the one that says seeds is right out front. I hope that makes sense. And then I'm just putting on my last one, which is going to go on the left side of the Dahlia there. Here is what I came up with. I definitely wanted some words on here. And you see what I mean by saying, keep all your words because you're definitely going to use them. Now, I didn't want to put seeds down twice because this says northern grown seeds. And then on the front there, it says seeds. So I just thought that looked kind of funny saying it twice. So I put northern grown up at the top. And then one says like maize catalog. One has a date on it. And then one says like plants, bulbs, flowers. I just put different stuff like that because to me, it looks like an old sign that would be hanging outside a mercantile from way back when. Here is where I remembered one of those other transfers. It had wording across the top that was fairly big, and I thought that would be perfect for my little mercantile sign. And it says, Alner Brothers, and I just cut that wording off and cut it down so I could see that it would go there perfect, and it does. And so it looks like Alner Brothers Seeds, and it all just came together so beautifully and so cohesive. You can just use bits and pieces of these transfers, and it looks like it was meant to be the whole time. And I'm just doing the exact same thing to all these transfers that I do. I hold up one edge, rub my little stick across it, and then I burnish it. And as a personal preference, I run a sanding sponge across it. You don't have to do this by all means if you don't like the way it looks. But you'll notice here, like I'm pointing to the pink flower, it just gives it a more vintage look if you ask me. And 
I just like the way that that looks. But a lot of people don't, so it just all depends on your preference. And then I added one more word at the bottom because I just couldn't stand it being, it just seemed like it was bare and naked on that one side. And this one says farm and floral guide. And that completes my little mercantile sign. Now, if you ask me, this is worthy to go up on the outside of any old seed and feed from way back in the day. Maybe even Granny and Pop would let me put it in their mercantile store. So let me know what you think about this one because I absolutely am in love. For DIY number two, we're going to work on this cute little fall drawer that I found at the thrift store. I paid four bucks for it, and y'all are going to laugh whenever you listen to my reasoning, but hey, it's me, okay? So you probably won't be all that shocked, but it's got the drawer. It's just like brand new. I don't think anybody's really used it. It's made of steel. It's called Steel Master. That tire note's made out of steel. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a little drawer. And, y'all, this is a thing, so I'm not crazy. In my mind, you remember back in school where we had the card catalog. Okay, when I hear seed catalog, it just goes hand in hand with, like, books. And so, am I crazy? But then I pulled this up on Pinterest, y'all, and there are people that actually do this that have their seeds, like, organized in these. We're going to use the color Mint Chip, which is by DIY Paint. I have only used this paint one time in my life, and why did I do that? I'm like, why haven't I used that more? This paint is so beautiful on a project, y'all. Look at this color, and this is just the first coat. You know the first coat is usually kind of wonky, especially if you've got like a darker color like this, and not to mention... You know, this drawer is made of steel, so it's not the easiest thing to paint. It wanted to kind of streak up on me. I probably should have used some of that Dixie Bell Slick Stick, but I was walking on the wild side, and I wasn't about to do that this day. So I gave this thing two coats of the mint chip, and you know, I, every time that I dry down DIY paint, I have to show you the process. But I do have to admit... Now, in this mint chip, it didn't really change that much. It did get lighter now. It always does. But, man, this color is just heavenly, y'all. I went through here, and the first thing that I saw that I wanted is the wording that's above little May. You know, my little cousin May there that's cutting her flowers out in the garden. She grew up in Mississippi, but you know she's from Tennessee. Come on. She's my cousin. So, yeah. We're just cutting this little area off right here because I want that word May. I believe that whole top area said maize and then it said something to the effect of southern grown seeds or something of that effect. And since it was southern, of course I picked that one. I mean, hello. And yeah, we just got one of these little cards. Now, this is what I put on my stuff whenever I'm selling it in my booth. Just like a little card like this to say thank you and to put the price on it and stuff. I get these at Hobby Lobby, and I mean, they're just kind of like a hard, uh, kind of like a cardboard, honestly. I cut it down so that it would slide in the front of my seed catalog, and I am taking the edge of the scissors and just kind of roughing it up. 
It's not cutting it by any means or anything, but it's making it all rough and willy-nilly, and I like that look. Hey, I'm from Tennessee. What do you expect? Now, here's the little part where I cut off the word may. Now, the apostrophe S I didn't need, and yes, there is a method to my madness, and you'll see in just a moment, but I just needed the may. So here I'm just putting it on my project, and it says May, and it says 1904. And I'm doing this the exact same way that I do all the others. I kind of hold up one little edge, and I use my tool, and it just comes off so easily. Now, from another piece of wording, there was a thing that said J. Steckler, I think. J. Yeah, D J. Steckler Company LTD. So I'm cutting that part off. Now I'm putting it together and it's going to say May J. Steckler. <laughs> okay, there is a method to my madness. I Basically, I'm piecing this together so it all makes sense. Or at least it made perfect sense to me. So I'm just transferring these little pieces on here. And then I'm going to burnish it. See, it says May J. Steckler Seed Company. Perfect. Now, the next thing that I'm going to cut off is just a very small piece, and it came off of our little picture of my cousin May, and it says Garden Manual, and that is actually what I am going to put on the front of my little seed card catalog, and I'm just kind of doing the exact same thing where... It, you know, it's so easy to get these transfers. They stick to almost anything. They stick to this little piece of, like, cardboard-type material. They stick to this steel, you know, that's on this catalog. I mean, well, card catalog or whatever you want to call this, this little file cabinet that I've got here. I mean, they stick to so many different things, and they're so easy to use. If you want to make a project look beautiful... Use a transfer because you're going to get a beautiful project every time. And I have never gotten anything from IOD that I'm not happy with. Ever, ever. There's so much detail and love put into it. And when you do somebody right, they're going to keep coming back. And that is exactly why they have so many people that love their projects, project, products, because they do it right. You know what I'm saying? So here, I'm just taking a little strawberry, and I pulled this strawberry off of that little piece that you just saw, and I stuck it on there. Now, here's May's cousin. This is Loretta, okay? And Loretta is from Kentucky, and she's got her little cousin Tanya there with her. That's Loretta and Tanya. And I'm just basically doing the exact same thing right here at the top of this file cabinet that I've done all along on these transfers is hold one little end up and then go across it. And when I get my transfer on, I make sure to burnish it. I think this picture is gorgeous. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think about it. I haven't seen this picture ever before. Now, here I'm just taking my little hand sander zippy thing, and it's got 120 grit on there, which is a little bit of a lower grit than the first one that I used. So, it caused this transfer to be roughed up just a little bit more than that first one. But I like that look. It's totally up to you. You do you, boo. So, anyways, right here... I am taking this picture that's got like little cherries at the bottom and I think it's got a strawberry on it or maybe it's a tomato and um, I'm just going there and cutting those pieces of fruit off like the single pieces of fruit. So I ended up putting this picture that has this beautiful little bird on the side and it ended up being a bird and some grapes. Now like I said a minute ago, I took some of the other fruit off, and we're going to place those one on each side of the little bird picture here. I actually ended up using those on the opposite side. I'm sorry. There's my little strawberry, and then I'm going to add, I believe that's the grapes there. I tell you what, sometimes it's hard when you're editing to actually see what's on there. After you hit 40s, it just, I don't know. 
but this is that Rust-Oleum two times matte clear and I like to spray my projects with that because it's easy and simple and it's done you know or at least I thought but then I felt that this strawberry and the grapes there on the side was just very mundane just hanging out by themselves they needed something else so i took these beautiful apples and it's like a grouping of three apples and it had writing on the bottom of it but i cut that writing off because we didn't need it we basically just needed the apples and i placed it on there and then we're done with the project i hope you like this one i think it's gorgeous and please let me know what you think She speaks her mind, tough as nails and smooth as wine. We burn hard as kerosene. Baby, we got our own thing. She ain't skinny and I ain't tall. And that don't bother us at all. I run naked through the yard. She flash if it boldly scar. Drinking wine and getting tired. And shooting out the damn street lights. How does she put up with me? Oh, baby, we got our own thing. We got our own thing. We don't need no rain. We ain't rich, but son of a. We're a hillbilly king and queen. Life don't seem so hard with you beneath the stars. Cause we're growing four leaf clovers in the yard. On to our third project. This is a gorgeous vase that I just happened upon at the thrift store yesterday. I paid $4 for it, which is not a bad price because you know the thrift stores has been ridiculous lately. And I love the handle on this. Look how beautiful that is. Now, it's kind of pot-bellied. That's the way we call it in the South. You know, it's, it's got a big old belly on it. And we're going to use Gravel Road. Now, Gravel Road is a lighter shade of the DIY paint, but before I add any kind of paint, I wanted to add the Dixie Belle Slick Stick because Slick Stick is a good product for anything that don't want to hold paint, like, for instance, glass or vases like these. If you put a good coat of that Slick Stick on it, it just gives your paint something to adhere to. Now, I'm not sponsored by Dixie Bell or DIY Paint or IOD even by any means. Not at all. Uh, by the way, if y'all know the IOD sisters, tell them to call me up because we could work something out. But anywho, um, I just tell you guys what I think good pro products are. If I use something that I know is a good product, I'm going to tell y'all every single time. And speaking of good products, y'all know that on every one of my videos, I let you know that most of my products do come from Miss Lori. And she's at Milton's Daughter. She has a little store in New York. And if you guys ever shopped at her store, you would probably never buy from anybody else because Miss Lori is a sweetheart. And her website is www.miltonsdaughter.com. And if you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10, you're going to get 10% off your first order. Now, there is an exception, I have to tell you. The DIY paints and the IOD stuff, they don't allow them to be discounted. So, for those things, you don't get the discount. So, please don't gripe at Miss Lori. It's not her fault. <laughs> it's just the kind of the way it is. But anything else that you buy from her is 10% off on that first order. Now, she carries everything. She carries all of the brushes that you see me use. She carries different types of paint. She doesn't just carry DIY. She carries Pentart products. She carries rice paper. She carries everything, honey. And y'all would absolutely love Miss Lori. So, next time you need something, just... Go to her, and you will love her. If y'all do want this ca seeds catalog or any of the transfers or anything from IOD, honey, she has it all and then some. So, all I'm doing right here is just giving this thing one good coat of the slick stick so that my gravel road will cover it. 
and when that totally dries, then we're going to add two coats of the gravel road. Now, gravel road is a light shade of gray, and when it dries, it's almost like a white gray. I'm not saying light gray. I'm saying like a white gray, and I mean, I think it's a beautiful color, and I really do like it, and I thought that it would be beautiful behind the transfer that I intend to use on my little pot-bellied vase. Now, y'all didn't think that I was going to show you different stuff out of the seed catalog without using my little cousin May's picture, now did ya? We've got to use May. I think this is one of the prettiest transfers. I love this image so much. Now, with this being pot-bellied, it really gave me a challenge. Now, if you're just starting out with transfers, it's probably best that you don't do anything that has curved surfaces like this. Now, it's doable. Don't get me wrong. You can do it. However, it's not easy to do. It takes a little bit of practice, and still, you may get some wrinkles on it because it's just harder to put it on a surface that's curved like this. And that's when I pull out the good old fingernail. Now, you guys that watch my channel a lot know that I love to use my fingernail instead of the little tool that they send you because to me, especially if I'm needing to feel my way around, I can do it better with my fingernail. And I also, when I have something that's curved like this, I will literally take the scissors and cut a couple of places up the side of it and it just makes it a little bit easier in my mind. Now, by the time I had finished this vase, I still did get a few wrinkles, but it doesn't bother me whatsoever. And even the people that buy my products, it doesn't seem to phase them at all that it has a little bit of wrinklage in it. Matter of fact, it kind of gives to the vintage look of the whole thing just a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying I prefer wrinkles, but I mean, they don't bother me. You know what I'm saying? So, I just went up through this whole thing with my fingernail, and you'll see where I cut slits in the side of it, and it just helps me to get those edges down just a little bit better. But to be honest with you, I was just worried to death by the time that I had finished this because I couldn't see what I was actually doing underneath that um, that plastic piece on the top. And I just kept saying, Lord, please don't let May's little face be all distorted. And I do have to let you know her face came out perfect. But you see me cutting these little slits in here. Like I said, in my mind, I think it helps. And I've seen a lot of people do that. So maybe it's a thing. I don't know. But I just did the best I could. And like I said, the wrinkles don't bother me too much. I guess it's kind of like life. Once you get over 40, you learn to embrace those wrinkles because there ain't a darn thing you can do about them. Now, a lot of times when you do have a little bit of wrinkles, you can go through and use your finger to kind of get them out just a little bit. And I did that. And I also put that 1890, and it's from just one of those um, random transfers from before. I've got my DIY white wax and my waxing brush, and I just put a small amount on there, and I go over the whole vase. I make sure to get on all that beautiful scrolly on the handle there and on the sides, and I just got it all over the place, and I could not find the paper towel, so I just grabbed like a lint-free rag, which you can use that or paper towels or even baby wipes, and I just kind of wiped off the excess. I wanted a lot of white wax left on this vase, so I went over this two times, and that's all I did to this vase, and I hope you like this one.
DIY number four. This one is really short and sweet. This is a little TV tray that I found at the thrift store. I only paid two bucks for it, and it's really pretty. It's a decent size. Now, I was not crazy about that sheen that's on the bottom part of it there, like the part that you would set your stuff on. The rest of it didn't bother me too bad. So what I did was I took my dark and decrepit, which is about the same color as the tray is in the first place, and I just added a coat all over this whole tray, and I wiped off the excess with a baby wipe. Now, dark and decrepit is like a top coat. You can even use it like a stain or like you would use a wax and just wipe off the excess, which is exactly what I did. The next thing that I did is I laid out this transfer. I absolutely love this one. It's got apples on it, and I didn't use a whole lot of the fruit so far, so I thought let's use fruit instead of florals. And I did want the word seeds above it and like a date for sure. So I started off by taking my little apples and laying them down and doing the exact same thing that I have done through the whole video with my transfers. I'm just using that little tool that they gave me while I hold up one end of my little transfer. And then I'm just going all the way over it and it comes right off and then I'm burnishing it. Then I laid down my word seeds and I'm also going to put the date down. And I decided to put the date down underneath the picture of the apples because I felt like it needed something down underneath there. Then I found one of the little tiny pieces that I had before. And I wanted like the name of the company, you know. And so this one said L.L. May and Company. And so I was going to put that up on the top over the word seeds, and I did put it down. And then after I put that down, I wanted to go over the whole piece like I was doing before and just give it a little bit of a sanding, very, very lightly. And like I said, that's just a personal preference. And at that point, I thought I was done. And then I just kind of kept looking at that word, the May, company and it just seemed like it was so small and it was kind of bothering me so I went through my stuff and I actually found this bigger one that said the same thing LL May and company and I cut it apart so that it would be in pieces and I decided to go over that little area where it said LL May and I didn't want to scratch it up with my sandpaper I was worried about doing that so I just kind of used like one of my little sanding discs that goes in my little hand sander and a combination of my fingernail and got it off of there without scratching it up. And now I'm going to put that bigger portion that says L.L. May and Company Seeds. And it just makes sense that way. And that's what I meant by you could use just different wording and different pictures from all your transfers to make endless amounts of different projects and if you're liking the ones from the seed catalog i have so many more projects in my mind i just didn't have the time to do them all in one video but if you want to see another one from the seeds catalog just let me know and on my next video that's what i'll do i hope you like this one it was short and sweet and i love it
Hey, if you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much. I enjoyed your company, and I hope that I helped you in some way or inspired you. And I hope that you'll go try out this seed catalog because, trust me, you are going to love it. Now, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video because it really helps me out on YouTube. It helps them to push my videos out there to people who've never seen me before, and it really helps out the channel. Also, make sure you're subscribed and that you have your bell notifications turned on to all. That way, every time I put out a video, you're going to be there with me. Now, my videos come out every Monday and Thursday at 6.30, and I hope to see you there at the next one, and I sure do hope you enjoyed this one. I love every single one of y'all, and I will see you back here real soon, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. If you did enjoy this video and you want to watch another one of mine, all you got to do is click that little button and it'll take you right there. Love y'all.